cost of goods sold is the subject we're going to deal with today, the first subject. Uh, this is a phrase uh, that refers to the cost of creating the products that a company sells. This phrase is important because it's used in conjunction in a number of places um, when thinking about a company's financials, when thinking about their business model, uh, when trying to predict profitability. Um, cost of goods sold is, is something that's sort of at the core of whether or not um, a company can achieve profitability and by how much. Um, it also has a lot to do with inventory and calculating levels of profit, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, so something that people should know uh, when examining their own companies. Again, it's the cost of creating a product uh, that a company sells, and the reason I underline creating is because uh, it's a summation of costs directly tied to production. So that includes parts, materials, labor, overhead, uh, and we'll talk about some examples of this, but uh, exact methods of calculating cost of goods sold uh, will differ across various companies, um, and also I should, I'm going to start calling it COGS, you'll see it referred to as COGS a lot. So uh, the exact uh, methods of calculation will differ, and we'll talk about some of those method methods. Um, important to understand that the cost of selling, packaging, or shipping goods to customers are operating expenses that are related to sales. Those are not the cost of goods sold itself. A really simple way to think about it is just parts, material, labor, and overhead associated with the creation of the product. So um, it's slightly different for products that are purchased for resale. Um, you know, if you're purchasing a product either from a factory that you've contracted with, or if you are purchasing a product like a retailer would um, from a manufacturer, and then you're going to resell that product, it's slightly different. Uh, it, it, in this case, remember that it includes the purchase price, uh, which generally has all this stuff in, you know, put inside of it, and then also freight, customs duties, uh, and sales or use taxes. So, you know, if you're a company that's buying something from China to resell it, you're going to want to include freight, customs duties, and uh, sale or use taxes when calculating COGS. So, one other thing, um, it, this appears on the income statement, the cost of goods sold, and you'll see it um, once you get to know income statements, or if you do already uh, fairly well, it'll appear on the income statement, and we'll explain why. Um, the income statement is a look at a period of time, uh, and you know, watch our videos on the income statements to learn more about them. But uh, cost of goods sold are really important. Uh, it's sort of the cost of, of producing your products. So let's talk about um, cost of goods sold related to other metrics and why they're sort of important. It's one thing to know the definition. It's another to know, you know, what is, it, what is cost of goods sold used in mathematically in other places in your business? Uh, the first and most obvious place is gross margin. Um, you know, if you'd like to learn more about gross margin, net profit, or some of the other things I'm going to mention here, watch the videos about these subjects. Uh, gross margin, simply and very quickly, is the revenue your company generates minus the cost of goods sold, remember, parts, materials, labor, overhead, divided by the revenue itself, and it's generally stated as a percentage. So if your uh, gross margin is 35%, um, you know, if, if you do a dollar in revenue, and it, you, your cost of goods sold are 65 cents, then you're going to end up with 35 cents left over here for the business to work with. So, you know, if it costs 65 cents to make your widget, you're selling it for a dollar, you've got 35 cents uh, of gross margin. If you divide that by a dollar, that's a 35% gross margin. So that's the amount of money your company has to play with uh, to do other things, to, to pay for operating expenses and other things inside the company. Um, so that's important to understand whenever, said, whenever someone asks, what's that company's gross margin or what's your gross margin? What they're asking is, how much do you sell a product for minus how much did it cost you to build it? Um, that's a rough idea of potentially uh, how profitable a company could be. Now, the reason that it isn't a great measurement of profitability, and isn't meant to be, is if you start to look at profit itself, uh, this is the other most common thing that cost of goods sold is used in, and that's net profit. So how much profit does a company make? Well, that's revenue minus how much it costs to produce all of your stuff, minus your operating expenses, minus interest and taxes. So this is a big one, right? The, um, this includes all kinds of things. It can include offices and salary and sales expenses and shipping and anything that doesn't fall into cost of goods sold. Um, so you, of course you're not profitable if you have a dollar in revenue 
it costs you 65 cents to create the product, and then your operating expenses are 60 cents, right? You wouldn't be profit profitable here because this is a dollar 25. You would have lost 25 cents in that case. So you can see how the cost of, I mean, this is sort of silly and everybody understands this, but the cost of creating your product directly figures into both gross margin and your ultimate profit, your net profit. So it's a really important number to track. Businesses are always, always, always trying to push that number down. Um, so whenever you're uh, planning that portion, you know, either you're purchasing products from someone overseas to resell them or you're making them your, yourself in a factory, in your home, whatever, you're going to want to drive the material costs, the parts costs, the labor costs, and the overhead costs down because, of, of course, that drives gross margin up and also leaves more money that goes toward profitability. Does that make sense to everyone? I hope so. So, um, there are different ways to calculate costs of goods sold. Uh, and this just might get a little confusing, but we'll go through a real simple example very quickly so you can understand these different methods. Um, these are some of the calculation methods. Average cost, first in, first out, which they call FIFO, and last in, first out, which they call LIFO, and specific identification. So for this example, let's use Hasselhoff's El Guapo action figures. We're making action figures of uh, Hasselhoff for sale in the uh, Latino market. I should say Latino markets because they would be the ones buying the action figures. So the, let's say you're going to sell four of these action figures. This is really simple, obviously. Your company's going to sell four. It produces the first two for $10 each, and price on plastic goes up. So it produces the second two for $12 each, and then the company sells two of them. And it gets 40 bucks selling two of them. So they've got 40 bucks in revenue. So how do you figure the cost of goods sold? Um, you know, obviously we're, we're going to figure this first before we talk about gross margin, but to figure cost of goods sold, there's a couple, we talked about these different ways. Average cost is what it sounds like. You take the average of how much it costs to produce all the units, divide by four, and in this case we sold two units, so that would be $22. So our cost of goods sold, the two units that we sold, was $22. Let's say we sold this unit and this unit. $22 is the average, we figured using the average cost method. So first in, first out is different. First in, first out says that whatever units were produced first, those are the, even if the units are exact same, those are the units you're going to sell uh, first. So in that case it would be $20, 10 plus 10. Last in, first out is the opposite. The last units you produce are the first ones you're going to sell. So in this case we would have had a cost of goods sold of 24 and then specific identification, we know we're really good at tracking inventory, so we know specifically we sold this unit and this unit, um, and in that case it's going to be $22. The reason why these, these methods matter is that you can, you'll can you notice if you do 40 bucks minus the, the cost of goods sold, we're going to get different gross margin or profit numbers, right? So uh, depending on how a unit wants to recognize that cost, and this has to do with taxes, uh, and with um, how much profit uh, or gross margin uh, they're going to report. So in this case, you know, you'd have $18 worth of, worth of uh, profit. In this case, you'd have 20. In this case, you'd have 16 and 18. So these are pretty varied numbers uh, for a company. So companies will uh, choose, at least in the United States, which of these uh, methods they'd like to use. Um, and it can have really big implications on things like taxes. So depending on your operating expenses uh, and whether or not you want to drive a profit, because of course you pay taxes on profit. So uh, that's essentially cost of goods sold. It's one of the key core components on the income statement uh, that we use to determine how much it costs uh, in parts, materials, labor, and overhead to generate a product. Uh, and then we use cost of goods sold to figure gross margin, a net profit, among other things.